Jim Denemy's art has been on display around the world. Today, an exhibition opens at Minneapolis Institute of Art, showcasing the acclaimed American Ojibwe artist. Born in Hayward, Wisconsin, he spent most of his life in Minneapolis. We got an early look at the exhibition and learned about the three themes across three galleries. The exhibition, The Lyrical Artwork of Jim Denemy, is about the last 15 years of production of Jim's life, artistic production, but also his life as a creative entity and person here in Minneapolis. He was so beloved, but yet he worked and lived as a native man here in Minnesota, but as an indigenous man in, as a contemporary artist across the globe. And so this exhibition surveys 15 years from 2007 to 2022 when he passed away. And we're really fortunate to bring together works from his final bodies that he was working on, these final series like Beautiful Witches, and some of his most iconoclastic and iconic works from across the country. I think that's what's so wonderful about this is that there are some works that people know, some that people have never seen, and then it sounds like some that were unfinished. Absolutely, and the works that were unfinished or in progress, we really, took them as they were in that moment. But these works that have never been seen before coming almost like home and being shown together in this moment is really special. And we really want to host everybody to come and see it from the most known works to the most unknown works, such as Totem Animal Spirit here. And most people know Jim as a painter, but we also have these sculptures that are just profound. And his sketchbooks are also included in the exhibition and a drawing, and so you can really get the breadth of how productive he was throughout his time. Tell us a little bit about his art and the depth behind it. He did not come to art until later in life. So Jim dropped out of high school around his sophomore year and then really lived, a, as he would say, a life of partying and addiction. In his late 20s, he became sober and went back to school at the U of M. And during that period, he also was studying art and really for the first time learning American history and what it meant to be native in America today through the American Indian Studies program. That evolution and those kind of moments of collision really stayed with Jim for the rest of his life. So when he started painting in earnest at the age of 35, he went back to construction work, but then would go home and paint at night on top of being a dad, on top of being an adult, and he would paint late into the night. And so this kind of moment here, and what we see in the show here, is this just profound creativity that he was doing in addition to a full-time job until he retired just a few years before he passed. Can you talk a little bit about what we see in some of them? Because there's some really interesting imagery. Absolutely. So Jim really had these two tracks. So he's really known for this very upfront, intense take on historical topics such as 1862, such as the colonization of North America, but also, you know, Norm Coleman and Al Franken's contentious runoff, Jesse Ventura's governor. You see all of these little moments told through satire and parody. Then he had these moments in these works such as the room we're in right now that were much quieter, they were more spiritual. And some of these works are what we like to think of as a remix on historical paintings such as Mona Lisa, Blue-Eyed Witch, or Alice in Wonderland after Monet, that really were him exploring and really working as a very traditional studio painter. Then you have just these really amazing and odd little assemblage sculptures the masks also as part of this room, and they all speak to this quieter moment where Jim was very elusive about it because they came from dreams, they came from his spirituality, but they often were inspirational moments that led to these really profound, gorgeous, luscious works. What can we learn from his art? I think what you, we can take away from Jim's art and his life is that it's always great, we applaud it when people are opinionated and they have the confidence to speak their truth. Yet we are very quick to forget the vulnerability. We're very quick to forget the humanity behind history. The entire show is really a celebration and a reflection on bringing back humanity and when we talk about art and life and culture. 
We're told Jim was heavily involved in the planning for this exhibition that all began in 2019. He wanted to make it welcoming for his grandkids and accessible to everyone. So you may notice some of the art is hung a little lower. The exhibition opens today and runs through March of next year. Mia is free, so you can view the art anytime the museum is open. We have more information at WCCO.com links.